Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Spin Rack. I'm here with my boy, Cal. Say what's up, Cal. Hey, ready to rock. Hey, today we're talking about that outstanding movie, The Absolute Powerhouse, Book of Clarence. It just came out, and it was just off the chain. I'm here, of course, with my boy, um, Cal, to discuss a little bit about it. Just to give you a little framework of this, this, of course, is comedy. Um, they're basically, it's a down, um, a Keith Stanfield, who's the actor right here, he is down in his luck. You know, this takes place back in the olden times, you know, when Jesus is around. And he um, comes up with the idea in order to make money because he owes money to a local gangster. And of course, he wants to woo the local gangster's um, sister. He comes up with the idea of like, hey, why don't I also, you know, pretend to be a messiah and then rake in all the cash? But in his course of doing that, he starts to realize there's something much more than just making the money and that he ends up actually believing that there is uh, a messiah. Um, so that's the basic standoff that we're having here, me and Cal. Let's get into it. Cal, so what is your issue with the movie? Cal. So I'll give you my interpretation of what Cal was saying. Cal was saying, you know, Mars, naturally you are 100% right. It was an interesting movie. Um, it definitely uh, hits all the high points. Any thought about blasphemy is thrown out the window because this is entertaining, it's comedy, and we know for a fact it's not fiction. I mean, it's fiction, it's not real. And so therefore, and the fact that the main character, the main protagonist ends up turning his life around and realizing, you know, at the very end that he is a believer. And I think that's a powerful moment, you know, no matter what has gone through. There has been controversy in this movie. We know that. And the controversy, of course, some people say the depiction of him, uh, the, the Black Jesus, of course, you know, him uh, being blasphemous. You know, those are those some of the other ones. And of course, the portrayal of, um, of, of um, uh, there's going to be a spoiler, you know, um, if you don't want to know it, don't watch it. But Benedict Cumberbatch is also depicted as, as Jesus in, at the very end. Um, and so the, that's the image that's basically been transmitted throughout the ages. And so you have, you know, the real Jesus who you don't actually see. I mean, you see, but, you know, who isn't depicted in the, it's not captured by, I guess, the reporter when everybody's being crucified. And so therefore, we don't know what he, he's never seen in the images throughout life, throughout the ages. But yeah, I mean, Cal, I agree with you 100% on those points that you just made. Hey, I'm sorry. My volume got cut. So I didn't hear a thing. No, I was just um, explaining, expounding to the world out there what you uh, agreed with and stuff like that. Practically, we're done, you know? I don't believe I agree with anything since I didn't hear it except for this tail end portion. But uh, the let's see, Book of Clarence, what can I say? Yeah, I've got some issues with that particular film, but... Bring it up. Let's talk about it. The box office has been extremely anemic. So either people didn't get the joke or, you know, it's just probably it isn't um people don't want to go out to watch it probably they're watching another media but what is your take of it so far give me a heads up me i didn't re i didn't realize the box office i didn't realize that the box office uh was anemic uh i thought they well uh, i thought they chose the right time for it after christmas <laughs> so so they really wouldn't get hit too much harder with the whole blasphemy charge but i look I, when it comes to stuff like this i don't approach i don't approach these type of films as someone who believes I really just try to approach it as somebody who's an atheist. I don't believe one way or the other, and I go with the same standards that I would for something else. Does What is the point of this story? Does it achieve what the point is at the end of the day? So, you know, I look at it, and I'm like, no, it doesn't. And if it doesn't want to have the charge of blasphemy, then you, you have to try to not do anything that's blasphemous, which this film just doesn't succeed at. And this film is in a long line of films that have been biblical and they've taken a lot of liberties with it. Uh, King of Kings, which I think is the first film on the life of Jesus in color. It, it took so many liberties. It was like a whole cloth story at the end of the day. They made up so much stuff for that film, but it never strayed into blasphemy because it didn't take the word of scripture and manipulate it for its own. This, even starting with the trailer, when you make a comment like knowledge is, when you make a comment like knowledge is greater than faith, that's a shot right across the bow. So, you know, you, you, can't, you just can't have it both ways. If you understand what blasphemy is and you're doing it in the film, then yeah, you're committing blasphemy and you're going to have to take it. You're going to have to take it. But you can't go with this totally disingenuous stance of, well, you know, watch it and evaluate it for yourself. I mean, pay for it. Give me my money. 
and then if I don't like it, you know, too bad, too bad, sucker. The idea of the idea of uh, Clarence somehow. I mean, this, this is a guy who's a charlatan and he's trying to make money because he has a because he owes a debt. And he looks at Jesus as some sort of rock star who's making money and he's going to be able to do it in the same way. OK, so that's particularly your premise. And this is going to be the uh, what's the the trophy? The, the trophy would be like the liar found out. So he's going to go through this, but then eventually he'll have some sort of conversion where he realized he shouldn't be doing this. And then he's going to do the right thing in the end. But it never happens for this character because he never does the right thing in the end. He's put to the test in a manner that's, again, hard to swallow because the people he would need to do it for were not the Romans, but the Sanhedrin. But, but again, hey, you know, forget about historical accuracy. And somehow he's able to achieve this. And you're like, OK, he finds faith, but he finds faith in what? You know, it, it sure as heck is not Jesus. <laughs> it's not him. You know, he never because, you know, he never repents of anything. OK, he's, he's never baptized or anything of those any of those particular things that would allow him to uh, be in that fold and that following. Clarence doesn't do so. He you know, he has the miracle, but the miracle is absent any sort of context, you know, for it to be a rational, or reasonable thing for you know the viewer to accept. And then you get into that third act, which is just hardcore. So I, I'm not, I mean, you everything from the life of Brian uh, to Jesus Christ Superstar uh, to the Book of Clarence, it's not that you haven't had these type of films before. This one does not execute very well. Actually, it doesn't execute what the slim premise is that's been given to it, especially with that last bit uh, with Jesus resurrecting Clarence. And you, you would that's a real head scratcher at the end of the day. Unless you're going to go into some, yeah, I guess some some real type of symbolism that you would have to scratch for, but it doesn't execute the it doesn't execute on the really thin premise that it's set upon. Well, there's a lot there to to, to say. You know, I I think we have to take this with a grain of salt. You know, the the whole point of the movie is the entertainment, right? And does it entertain? And I think it does. I think it goes off on 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 many a many points it does. I mean, the whole point is to say, hey, what happens if you put a guy back in the old days and see, you know, what he would do, someone who's out down his luck. And that's exactly what he does. And, you know, he's trying to scheme to to pay back his loan. And so, yeah, he comes across on this whole thing with Jesus. His brother, by the way, Thomas, is a, is, a, is an apostle. You know, he is a believer. He's, he leaves his whole family and, and, and everything, not even their mother. And that's one of the things that the uh, Clarence keeps coming back at him saying, yo, dude, you just took off with this dude. You forgot about your mother. You didn't even come back. And that's his twin. You know, I mean, what is, what is the matter with you, bro? Uh, and, and of course, Thomas says repeatedly, like, yo, you're, un, you're an unbeliever. You're not really going to get it. So, you know, you need to just step aside. But as the movie develops, his brother sees uh, what happens, his change in character from the things that he's endured as he sees some of the injustices that occurs, but he also sees also the miracles that happen. And he comes to believe that at the very end, he does believe. It's not a question if he does. He does. Believe. And that's one of the reasons that um, Jesus brings him back. You know, I'm, of course, this is comedy. This is a movie. So there's there's but so much they're going to do. But the point of the matter is the man is from where he was not a believer. He does a 180 turn where he becomes a believer and what is actually happening, you know? So what, it, it, hmm? what do you believe in? He believes in Jesus. He believes in God. He believes in the miracles. He's seen these in, in his own heart. He's seen the effects he's had on people, you know? And where, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to challenge that. Where in the film is it shown that he believes that? Where does he ever state that he believes that? Where does he repent? And this is the problem that I have with it. This is not a film set in the old days. This is just like a film that's like set in the Roman time. This is a biblical this is a biblically aligned story it's a biblically aligned story i'm not going to focus on any of the other stuff that goes in it in this in, in saying that this is a biblically aligned story okay and once you throw jesus into it you know what you're doing it's not if you throw caesar into it okay not if you throw the franks or the goths or any of that type of stuff or king arthur you threw jesus into this and once you do that, you understand what your undertaking is, especially if you're going to depict Jesus, not John the Baptist, but Jesus. So you, you, you'd have to be like, 
little less than inept if you don't understand that those things are going to come into play and your execution is going to be scrutinized because you're not the first person to do this. So you don't get a pass on that. So now you're saying, okay, he comes to faith. Is faith in what? And if you're saying that he has faith in God, okay, where in the movie does he ever state that or show it? Where's the, you know, where is his conversion at the end of the day? He never states it. We're just supposed to say, well, he walks on the water, so it must have ha it must have happened. Th that's giving the film a lot. Actually, that's giving the film too much. So if that's what you're going to say that he does have faith, and I'll give it to you. Hey, he has faith. I don't know what it's in. You know, he's walking on water. You have the miracle. I don't understand the context of this miracle. Because all miracles that are biblical have a context. The water isn't just parted. The water isn't just parted for the hell of it. It's parted so the people can make it from one side to the other. The 10 plagues are not just haphazard. They're to get the Israelites released, okay? Lazarus isn't resurrected from the dead um, after four days, you know, because Jesus liked the number four. No, it was so people would understand that he, okay, was given dominion over death. So now he's walking on water, okay. What was the point? You have another miracle where uh, Jesus allows Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, ben uh, Benedict Cumberbatch's character to produce coins from his hand, but he ends up crucified. So what was the point of that miracle? So these are the things that come. In, these are the things that I'm bringing to play. If it's a miracle, okay, there's usually a context for it. There's no context. I think, for I think it. you're taking this to you're taking this way too seriously. This is a movie. Uh, uh, entertainment. So if we go back to the plot about mm -hmm. the miracle of him walking, the whole point is there to show that he basically says, if you don't walk on water, then you're going to be saved, right? And so right. basically God is like saying, well, you wanted to be a Messiah? Bro, you're going to walk You're gonna walk on water. And so that definitely awes him. And he's like, oh my gosh, he didn't believe that, whether he says it or not, but he definitely shows it. And then you see his brother who comes to him and says, yo, you know, all this stuff, I see that you're doing good deeds. I see that the things that you're following through, I mean, the miracle that you've seen him walk, it's amazing. These are the type of things that I would never have expected from you at all. He's free slaves. Again, he never, with all the money that he raised, they wouldn't have thought about that at all. And of course, the, 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 the Benedict Cumberbatch point is just a joke. You know, that's the whole point of it. It's not supposed to be, oh, yo, dude, why? The point is, is that, you know, you have, which we know in reality, you know, the the, the blue-eyed, blonde eyed, the blue-eyed, blonde-haired Jesus was something that was done way after um, the fact, right? It wasn't uh, taken from someone who actually drew or knew where Jesus, what Jesus looked like at the time period. And so they're saying, well, hey, this guy gets himself. Actually, 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 it was, it was, it was. It was right, and so, and so he, he, lets, he gets himself cleaned up, and so now he's like someone, uh, like a court reporter who's who's who's. Who's, who's drawing people in in the crucifixion, the people who are being crucified, he decides, yeah, I'm going to focus on the blonde haired guy. And that's that's who we're going to focus on, who um, the, the Messiah was. You know, totally missing the fact that the Messiah didn't look anything like that. So, yeah, yeah, I, yeah I'm not, yeah, yeah I, I don't buy any of that. The, uh, the idea of the image of Jesus that most people were drawing from, because nobody had an image of what they were drawing from, is from the Shroud of Turin. And that's where a lot of the Renaissance people got their particular image from. So there is a historical basis for it. It wasn't that, hey, you know, we're just going to make them look like this. If you look at the Shroud of Turin and then you look at those early images, they were going by that because it was believed that this was the shroud that had covered Jesus when he was entombed. So there is a historical, there is a historical basis. For I that totally agree. That is not a historical because I mean, think about it. The people who basically whoa, whoa, whoa. How, 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 wait, 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 wait. How can that not be historical basis for it if they're taking it from the shroud? Because you're saying, look, history. you're saying, you're saying no, because that's just a particular interpretation. I'm saying you have the no, people, it's not an interpretation. Hold, hold on a second. You have the people when um, um, Christianity was organized, I guess, under the mm -hmm. Roman Empire under Constantine and his mother. They are the ones who went down there and started looking and, and categorizing artifacts and what should, what is this, what is what are, are things that should be kept, you know, what is supposed to where Jesus walked, all those type of things. And you know, nowhere in that time period were there any depictions of Jesus, you know. And then all of which a sudden, why they, of, hundreds which is of why years, they looked hundreds, at the Shroud of Turin. Hundreds of years later, I mean, you're trying to say Jesus looked exactly. Like what he is, and, and the Chinatown doesn't give you his uh, his, his hair color. No, 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 dude, you're missing the point. You're missing the point, man. It's historical because people believe that the Shroud of Turin was legitimate, and that's where they got that image from. Now, of course, we can do stuff now that they couldn't do then. We can do carbon dating, and the jury is still out on the Shroud of Turin as to whether or not that's authentic or not. They haven't been able to dismiss it one way or the other. 
But to say that it's not historical, that's not that's not accurate. Historical in the historical. context that, that this was definitely from that particular um, time period. This would not. Yeah. I mean, what, what are they talking about? They said the Shroud Turing. They think it's from what the thirteenth century, fourteenth century. No, they, no, no. They, 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 they've gone two different ways with it. They're saying, look, it's from this time period, but at the same point, the image on the Shroud of Turin is an image of somebody actually coming through the sheet. And they can't explain how that image is actually that image is actually there. So you've got two competing things going on with it. But besides the fact, we can now say that it's from the 13th century, where at the time when it was displayed, there was no way to authenticate it. Okay, so at the time, if people are looking at this like, hey, if Renaissance masters are saying, oh, look, this is supposed to be his shroud, that's what his image is at, let's draw it like this, then there is a historical context for it. Is it wrong? Sure. But there's still a historical context for it, not just, hey, let's make them white or let's make them look like this. I'm saying that you, we can't, even within uh, the church, the Catholic church, there was, there was controversy regarding the Shroud of Turin, you know, whether it actually depicted what it's actually. And, the, and there's, there still and so, is, but and that so, doesn't mean. Right, and but I'm saying. The fact so, that there's controversy. The hold, hold, hold on, I'm trying to say the point is, is that, you know, get something that's, 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 that's discovered hundreds of years later, and then all of a sudden, right. this is the way it's supposed to be. There's that no doesn't mean that. it. It's it comes discovered back, hundreds of back, years later back, doesn't back, make it that does not make it less historical. It you comes said back it wasn't historical. Back, it comes back, it I'm comes giving back, you a historical it, basis I'm, from it. I'm giving you, you a historical basis. I'm saying the fact the fact of the matter is when they were doing this at the very beginning of the church, no one had these type of things. In fact, I don't even think there I think there was there were no there were very few depictions of Jesus. There were some scratches here and there. But they didn't have the dead they didn't have the dead souls either. And also you have the fact the people living there you know, I don't think that they would have looked like this. So I think there's a there's a there's a, a different and you might be and you might happened. be wrong. You and might I, be wrong. I'm not I making think, the argument I think that, that Jesus I think looked the like argument that. is going to be that most likely it will be right. I'm not right. making the argument that Jesus looked like that. You said there was no historical basis. That said there is a historical basis. If there, you don't no like the historical, basis, basis. there's no historical basis that he's blue eyed blonde and, and from people. In that I area. never I said know. I never said that the Shroud of Turin had blue eyes and blonde hair. I said there was a historical basis for the features that you would see on those early images. That's what I said. You didn't want to listen to me, and here we are. I heard it, but I'm just saying I, it's like bringing in um, um, evidence that's like, like, like woozy. You're not sure 100 percent, 50 percent, and you're like, yo, let's no, no, I, I never. I'm, I am 100. I'm 100. Do you believe that that's the actual the shroud of Sharon actually is the face of Jesus? That's not the question. You have I think, to no, I'm saying, you're, you're, you're bring it in. You're bringing it into an argument that I'm saying that's something because you said there was no historical basis for it. I corrected you. You could have just said, "Oh, I didn't know that." We could have moved on. No, but I'm saying there is no historical basis. I don't think there all is right. a historical basis. And I think again, there's a lot well, of uh, experts. All you listeners, all, all you listeners, that's not true. All the listeners, you guys can go. You can check it. There is a historical basis for it. Uh, yeah, it's it's a thin one. Very, very thin. Hey, so yeah, we're, then, going back, we're going back then, to the movie. Then, there. You know, we're going back to the movie and stuff. So, I, you know, I think that you have to look. There have been miracles that have been done in the Bible, you know, where people who are non-believers have, have been saved, where some things have happened to them, right? And here you like say, who? Well, that happened. Like who? 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 What, what miracle in the Bible was done for a non-believer? What miracle in the Bible? I mean, right off the bat, <laughs> I can't quote all the stuff, but I'm saying we have like what? Um, what is it? it was Mary you have, you have miracles. You have miracles that were done in the Bible for people who were not Israelites or Jews. Okay, people who were supposedly outside of the faith. That's even you know you have those throughout the Old Testament, but for a non-believer to receive a miracle, that would mean somebody who has no faith received a miracle. That didn't happen. <laughs> well, I think it did, but I, I, I have to go back to my. Uh, I think you. I, I, I think to you're going to want to take. I think you're going to want to take that one back. I, I, don't, I, don't, think wanna, I don't think you want to. I don't think you want. I don't think you want to. I don't think you want to die on that hill. <laughs> you know, but we're getting back to this the movie. <laughs> and, and it's time to, it's time to <laughs> so, yeah. Again. He does these particular things. And I'm like, okay, there's no, there's no context for what's going on, all right? They, they because he's fo they're following a certain formula for these types of films. 
And this is supposed to, again, the liar found out. The liar, you know, gets found out, but then he turns these particular, he turns over, new leaf, goes forward. But, you know, they still want Clarence to be, whatever they've decided, they still want Clarence to be crucified. He's not going to escape or anything of that nature. And then the idea is like, hey, if you don't walk on this water, you know, we won't believe you're the Messiah. And then he walks on the water. So, like, what, there's, I'm like, if I try to unpack that, it's like, okay, this miracle was done so this dude could be crucified? So he could be resurrected later? Explain that one. What was the point in that? Oh, in, in the, 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 the premise of that is that, you know, he, he because he believed at the very end, you know, and he went through and he had to be crucified, you know, I believe mm -hmm. that is why he was brought back, you know, because he, at the very end, he came, he came, he came around. At the very beginning, he didn't know. believe in any of that stuff. This is all a scam to make money, right? Right. That's what, right? But in the end, mm -hmm. he, didn't, he, he knew it wasn't a scam. It was real. And so he believed. And so because he had suffered, you know, he had to take What did he believe in? I've he asked this before. Jesus. What? He believed in Jesus. He believed in Jesus. I mean, bro. I don't where, know if I'm okay. Jesus. Where in the film? Where in the film does? Where in the film does that happen? Where you could put your finger on, like right here. This is where I believe. I, I can. I can put my finger on it. I can put my finger on it right there. Especially when he walked on water and he realized, holy crap, this is real. This is not fake. You know, what I'm trying to say he, that's he believed. That's he walks on have. water, and once he walks on water, he believes that Jesus is the Messiah. Is that what he you're saying? It. Yeah, I'm saying. And then you have, you also have his friend. I forgot his name. Was it that is Ezekiel? I can't remember the name of his friend. Who, when he saw the, um, uh, it was Mary Magdalene getting stoned. He mm -hmm. saw Jesus do that. And he was like, oh, snap. This is legit. He was like telling his friend that this stuff is real. He really is. What, because before all that, his friend who was a stoner was like, nah, this is all a joke. We'll do whatever we got to do. Bro, let's get this done done. And now his friend saw it and believed it. And he saw it and he believed it. You know, so I mean, I I don't know how else you can. How many times I got to say this? Definitely, I'm that's, still I'm still I, waiting for you to say well, it because I just none said the of whole premise is that he does turn things around and he believes, right? I that's think this is, I think this is more just I think this is more just a trophy that uh, somehow he can be his own redeemer, and in doing that, they love to put that into uh, films of faith, or at least the uh, the secular versions, that he can be his own redeemer, that somehow Clarence has redeemed himself. Okay, he didn't have to repent. He uh, didn't not have to acknowledge God or Jesus. Either one of those, it was enough that he had a change of heart, and that's where and that's where it went. That's not how that's not how it works. Okay, I mean, e even the person who might be the most uh, vapid when it comes to scripture understands that's not how it works. You're not your own redeemer, but that's how they wanted to go with it in the film because otherwise, there is no part of this film where I could say, hey. This guy came to faith here. He came to faith here. He came to faith. He came to faith through a miracle that was going to allow him to be crucified so he could be resurrected. I mean, he didn't know he, he didn't was, know he was being resurrected. You see, you're assuming he knew. He didn't know. He was like, oh, well, this guy is legit. It's is complete. And you know what I've been basically doing wasn't true. You know, and so I'm going to get my punishment for 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 doing things that I shouldn't have been doing. You know, and, and because he, he's and not because, the one who's redeeming himself. He's not saying, yo. I, I, he's saying he's basically saying, "I, dude, I recognize I screwed up." You know, what I'm trying to say, right? You know, it's a greater power, and that's where he's like, "Yo, I'm getting punished because, yo, dude, I, I did wrong." He gets resurrected because he's, you know, people believe that he was the Messiah. You know, and he did it. Hmm. Ah, uh, uh, man, man. I, okay, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. I want to hear. What were you going to say? In order for okay, if he does a miracle, what's allow who or what is allowing him to do this miracle? He didn't do the miracle. I'm saying Jesus did the miracle. Why would Jesus do a miracle that would allow this man to be crucified? Same thing with Benjamin Cumberbatch's character. Why would he do a miracle that would result? It's in a movie, bro. It's a freaking movie. That's no, 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 no. no. You, I allowed you. To, no, I allowed that with the other stuff. You can't vacillate between it's I silly. I, I said, and I then said at the same all, time, no, that's the joke. That's the we don't got We don't got to take it seriously. We don't got to take it seriously. Okay. And then when you ask a very simple question, which should be answered, hey, where did he come to faith? It's a big, you know, it's a big, you know, no, literally, you we're playing, we're playing pong. You know, mm -hmm. I answered you straight up three times. There's no question about it. You just and I listened. I, I listened each the time. There's a I difference each time, and none of those times, none of those times that you gave those responses, 
would allow for, to say, hey, he came to faith here. No, at the very at the very least. I did. I specifically said, I, I quoted, I said, told you a And I acknowledge, I acknowledge every single time that you, that you said it. I'm not saying you, I'm talking about the points that you're making in the film. None of those points, okay, turn to, you know, show someone who has come to faith. Okay, he might have come to conscience, which is different than faith. He may have come to conscience saying, like, you know, what I'm doing is wrong and I need to do stuff that's right. But that's not faith. I think that at the very end that he definitely believed. I mean, you even I think it. and so I think the secular know. notion is the secular notion wants to tell people that if you know you have a good heart, okay, you change, okay, especially you can change before it's too late. All right, you know, you'll be able to embrace the goodness. You know, you're a good person at the end of the day. You, you know, you, you cleaned up your act. You know, you make up for your mistake. You can redeem yourself. That's not what the, but that, that's not the Christian faith. It doesn't say that. So these guys who are coming in here, I think that escapes them in terms of what they're do in terms of what they're doing here. Because the big moment of Clarence, Clarence walking on water should be a big moment. That should be a big moment where we're like, oh, wow. You know, he, yeah, he gets it. He finally gets it. But there's nothing to connect it to anything else. And that's the big problem. And then the resurrection at the end of the day, I would have to say, why Clarence? This, this, why Clarence as opposed to somebody else, as opposed to Benjamin coming back to his candidate or someone? Why does this guy get it at the end of the day? We understand Lazarus, okay, or the, or the, uh, the young girl. We understand those. Those are all miracles meant to promote faith and belief in the people and to glorify God. Why does Clarence get it? What does that do at the end of the day? And yes, we can say it's just a movie. It's not supposed to be taken seriously, but you're doing some pretty serious stuff in here. And whether people want to admit it or not, these type of films help to inject, okay, help to inject how people believe when it comes to faith. Like, I don't need to, you know, go and investigate any further. This is pretty much along the lines with uh, social Christianity or cultural Christianity as I believe it. And like, no, that's not how that works at all. Okay, that's good for a movie, but that's not how it works with the faith. Now, I'm just, uh, and I agree with you, this is not, uh, this is not the passion of the Christ, and it's not a church sermon at the end of the day. But in terms of your story, in terms of the connectivity of your story, you're, you have a foundation for it. And that foundation is the Christian faith. If you can't get that right, maybe you should do a story that you understand better. A story that's based on works, where, hey, if I do these works, I can get redeemed and I'll be able to be in good graces with the higher power. Christianity doesn't work like that. I totally think that you're totally overthinking this thing and you're totally missing the point. So, I mean, there's no point if you are refusing to, to acknowledge the fact that, hey, it's a comedy and the whole point behind it is that, you know, it's a joke of what's going on. But at the very end, the character, the main character realizes his unbelief and is risen because of that. Jesus recognized that, yo, this guy was an unbeliever. He believed at the very end, and he's been risen because of uh, of the fact that he was crucified, right? So we what? see, but I mean, I can't, I can't, if I, if we, we, we're basically arguing about two different things. You have one interpretation, and I have another interpretation. So it's up for the audience mm -hmm. to basically agree. What's, so, the, what, what's your, you, wait, 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 what's your, inter what's your interpretation? I think I've been your I, I, I explained it three times. I don't know we need to go hey, over it again. I, no, 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 okay. this, this isn't for me. This isn't for me. This is for the listeners. Okay, just so every, just so we'll be clear. Okay, my I'm not interpreting anything. I'm saying that these guys set out to tell a story. Story doesn't work. Okay, because they didn't execute on the parts that were needed. Okay, in order to make the story work, you took a story that is based foundationally on the tenets of Christian faith. You don't understand them, and because of that, the moments that needed to work don't work because you don't you did not put that into the film. That's what I'm saying. I'm not interpreting anything. I'm saying your film doesn't work for these reasons. Now, what are you saying? I, well, you're, the, when we were doing the review of the movie, the question is, did you enjoy the movie? Did you think it was a good movie? And I said, yes, right? That's mm -hmm. there. And we're coming back with you saying how Christian faith should work. And that's the essence of that. Not, is not should, that, how it does work. No, not saying I think, should. I think, I think there's a lot of, uh, there's, there's, within Christianity, there's a lot of interpretation as to what should or shouldn't be and how you interpret it. And, and that interpretation allows for a whole oh, bunch of denominations oh, and stuff yeah, that and people should not be doing. And so people will, will make differences in how they uh, choose to do it. I mean, such as like blasphemy, right? Blasphemy laws have been, in at least in the Christian world, 
routinely no are have been taken off the books most of the time. You know, and they haven't right. been, they haven't been um, harshly interpreted for years. Now, if you go to Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda, and for ISIS, yeah, they do it, but in most of the Muslim world, they don't. I mean, there are some countries like Pakistan that still um, use it at times, but not all of the the Arab world uses it. Okay, the, the Muslim world uses it. So I think it depends. You know, it, it people have different interpretation of things at a time, and they also say, hey, well, you know, one person's interpretation of things may be a little different from someone else. So we're not, but we're not. We're arguing that as opposed to saying. Was this movie an enjoyable movie? Was this movie something that you would recommend someone to see? And if we come down to that basis, I'm like, yes, it is. If we're talking about also, you're saying that, oh, the basis that he, there's no belief, that he, he didn't do anything for belief. And I explained it a couple of times. I can't explain it anymore. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. Well, hey, it's not, I mean, again, again, it's not your explanation. It's the film. And you're explaining it. I'm going to say it's not here in the film, and I guess you could explain some more, but the amount of explanation won't change the fact that it's not there in the film. And again, the whole idea, I'm not coming here, again, I'm not coming here trying to preach gospel to anyone. But if I just take this as somebody who has no, no, if I have no uh, belief whatsoever, and I just went by uh, the sacraments and the tenets of Christianity, that would be enough to realize, hey, these guys don't know what the hell they're talking about. OK, and then I could you could make the argument about interpretation and so on and so forth. But if the interpretation is that, hey, it's not in line with these particular things, you know, then these guys wouldn't know what they're talking about. either. So you can interpret stuff all, all you want. If your interpretation is wrong, you're wrong. OK, if, if the if I'm saying in English, please bring me an orange and you translate, please bring me a banana. It's wrong. OK, so end the story. This should not be that this should not be that difficult to get. Well, it's using that logic, big, a, that'd be great. But you know, the one thing we know about Christianity is the the amount of flavors within it. So there, there there's, is quite a, a, a wide breadth of, of what it is and, and what people accept, yeah. what people will accept, and and how how I would say more narrow and how expansive their views are. You know, so I mean, the only person who at the very end can judge is God Himself, and no one's gone. Met Not them, this met movie. Back. I can judge this movie just fine. <laughs> okay, so look, let's wrap it up. So. It, in the scheme of things, I'm saying, hey, I think it's a it's a it's a funny movie. I say go check it out when you get it. Um, hopefully, it does better on TV on um on on streaming, you know. But hey, check when you have it's an entertaining show. Cal, uh, again, uh, uh, once more, uh, this was a film that was predicated on certain on certain foundational elements, and because of a lack of understanding of those foundational elements, it doesn't work. It's uh, is it this much? I will say there's one positive I can say the soundtrack is very good. That's a very enjoyable soundtrack, fun to listen to, very nice to listen to. Put that in your car, you got a nice drive 40, 40 minutes, maybe an hour. That's a good soundtrack to listen to. I wish they had put the same, uh, I wish they had put the same diligence that, into the film that they did into the soundtrack. <laughs> well, it was by the same guy, James. Sam I know, Sam I know, that's why I said that. Okay, of Seal. And and he had quite a few people on it. I mean, you're talking about. I think Jay Z was a producer on this. Uh, they had they said Shaba Banks, um, Doja Cat. Um, yeah, and it's a really, and it's a really. Cut. I think that the soundtrack I think is solid. You know, very good. I mean, if if their idea was, hey, we want to make a soundtrack that people are going to really like to listen to, it's enjoyable. You're going to want to listen to it more than once. They did that. I wish they had done the same with the film. Okay. Enough said. All right. Well, hey, that's your answer, people. Tell us what you think. Comment, subscribe, give a thumbs up. Spin rack. We're out.